All right, let's do a little bit more work and see if we can come up with some equations that represent situations. Some of these situations involve tables, some others with words. Um, there is a little equation bank at the end as well that we are going to be drawing from uh, to find the answers. But let's see what we can find here. So the table represents the relationship between the base length and height of some parallelograms. All right, so parallelogram in geometry, maybe looks something like this. We're talking about the base length, which is this right here, and then the height, which is this right here. So uh, if we look at the table, again, this is kind of like X and Y, uh, is there a relationship between the two? How are the X and Y connected? So if you study that for a little bit, you might notice that if we multiply these together, we always get the same thing, all right? One times 48 is 48. Two times 24 is 48. Three times 16 is 48, and so on and so forth. So the base length, which is x, times the height, which is y, is equal to 48 in this situation. So it's always equal to 48 for this particular parallelogram. All right, so let's see if we can find the equation that matches up with that. So it should be something like x times y equals 48, all right? So there we go. That's our equation right there. x times y equals 48. All right, number two. Visitors to a carnival are invited to guess the number of beans in a jar. The person who guesses the correct number wins 300. Dollars. If multiple people guess correctly, the prize will be divided evenly among them. So $300 is divided evenly among the number of people. Describe the relationship between the number of people who guess correctly and the amount of money each person receives. Okay? So let's think about this. If we have one person, then that person wins 300, right? If we have two people win, then that 300 is divided evenly, so each person would get 150. If we had three people, 300 would have to be divided by three, and each person would get 100. So essentially, we're taking the $300 and dividing it by each the amount of people, which it would be x. So we're dividing it by x, and then that will give us our y value. So 300 divided by 1 is 300. 300 divided by 2 is 150. 300 divided by 3 is 100. So we'll take 300 and divide by the number of people number of people is x to get the amount of money. Which would be the y. All right, so 300 divided by x should be equal to the y value. Looks like that is that equation. So y equals 300 divided by x. probably how I would write it, 300 divided by x like this, but use that divide sign as well. All right, third situation. You might know there's 128 ounces in one gallon. If not, now you do. So describe the relationship between the number of gallons x and the number of ounces y. All right, so if I want to know Let's see, so I'm just going to maybe make a table of values on this one as well. So, um, so I've got x and y, x is gallons, and y is ounces. So if I've got one gallon, that's 128 ounces. If I've got two gallons then, that would be double that, right? So that would be like 256 ounces. 
And if I get three gallons, I'd have to multiply that by three. I think I've got the relationship here, right? Because you're taking X and you're multiplying it by 128 and you get the Y. So one times 128 is 128. Two times 128 is 256. So, um, so we'll take the number of gallons which is x, multiplied by 128 is the number of ounces, which is y. So 128 times x is equal to y. All right, so it kind of looks like this one, but actually it's this one, right? 128 times x is equal to y, not 128 times y is equal to x. So let's be careful with that one. y equals 128x. So that would be the relationship that converts from gallons to ounces.